should be afraid of sharks. Just like you should be afraid of a lion or a crocodile or anything that's a capable predator. It's how you react to that fear that is the most important. And that is through respect, not malice. Through an understanding, not ignorance. My name's Riley Elliott. I've got a PhD in shark behaviour and I live in Tairua, New Zealand. It's on the northeast coast of the North Island. It's basically where everyone comes on holiday, so it's a true slice of paradise. It's where I grew up, where I started employing myself on the sea. Every summer, myself and my university flatmates, we'd all come stay at a batch, work on the tourist boats, and in our spare time go surfing and, and just enjoy the water. But there's only so long you can sit on a surfboard bobbing at the surface without wondering what's going on below you. The transition from surfing to spearfishing opened up a whole new world of understanding of what was out there. The more time I spent underwater out there, the more I realized I had to learn from it, to understand it. And that lust for knowledge, you know, is what made me pursue a career in marine biology. To be honest, nothing can really replace going out there yourself and seeing it, being exposed to it, the risks, the dangers, the unknown. The reward I never saw coming, though, was the sharing of that knowledge with people who didn't have that opportunity to go out to sea and under the sea. I've worked in industries my whole life where you cannot afford to break down. In tourism, in TV filmmaking, and now working surrounded by sharks in the middle of the ocean. You can't afford an engine that skips a beat. There's requirements now for how fuel efficient and clean engines need to be. And Yamaha passes those with flying colors. But not only that, Yamaha has the Right Waters campaign, which is an international campaign educating and better understanding how ocean ecosystems work. And it's so humbling to be paired with an industry and a program like that from such a big global brand, because it shows they care as much about the ocean as I do. People often ask me, how did I get into sharks? Put it simply, it's because it's I was afraid of them. I'm a surfer. That is the one thing you fear out there. But as a budding marine biologist, I guess I was driven to understand my greatest fear. But the only way to figure out if you should be afraid of a shark is to go face to face with it. And that's what I did. A tragic event happened just down the coast here where a girl got bit and killed by a great white shark in a place that they historically have been absent. It's like my question landed in my backyard by fate. And I had the tools to answer it. I had learned from blue sharks we could tag them, track them, tell their story, learn about them but also empathetically understand what they're doing and how it affects us. So I took that same recipe into the waters up my coast, but this time with the great white shark. What I found out about this area was that it was actually a new nursery ground for the great white shark. And most of the animals we were observing were newborn babies all the way up to sub-adults. The most dangerous age for a great white shark is that teenager stage, where they shift their prey from fish to seals. But no one teaches them what a seal is, and that's where mistakes can happen. There's a few ways you can tag sharks. You can catch them and you can bolt a tag onto its dorsal fin. It's quite invasive and it's hard to do with bigger species of shark like great whites. So what I employed was the least invasive method, which is simply using a pole to insert a dart at the base of the dorsal fin, which tows a little tag around. You hit the shark in a very specific spot where there's no nerve endings, there's no pain. The beauty of this method is, every time the shark comes to the surface, anywhere on Earth, a satellite will pick it up and tell you on your laptop where that shark is. The tracking app for me, called the Great White app, is um, it's Christmas every morning for me. I get up and I, I want to know, is there a new location? Have they gone somewhere different? It's addictive, and I think the public feels that too. We saw the juvenile sharks, you know, largely hang out along the coastline, which is really interesting. They're, they're overlapping with us every single day. 
The migrations they make just blow your mind, you know? One of them all the way to Tonga and back. One of them to Northeast Australia. A few up to Fiji and New Caledonia. The greatest lesson to learn from the app for me is the gauntlets that these animals run every day. The millions and millions of hooks and nets that they have to survive through. And unfortunately, we do see through the app that some of them don't. New Zealand is infamous for being clean and green, but when you dive into the blue, you realize we're a nation dominated by fisheries. The struggles that marine life face in New Zealand are huge. There used to be scallops. There used to be crayfish. There used to be bait balls and gannets diving on them, and now you struggle to see any of that. And it's really hard sometimes to keep your chin up. But there is hope, you know, people, people are passionate about it. It's their livelihood, it's their enjoyment, it's their recreation with their kids. And if you get enough public opinion on things, I've learned, you know, in my experience with sharks, that if you get enough people on board that care, you can swing the pendulum the other way. Sharks are critical for ocean health because they're the doctors and the garbage men of the sea. They pick off the weak, the sick, they maintain population health and numbers. And that's a, that's a house of cards, a stability that's been cemented through 400 million years. So the fact that within the last 50 years we've removed 70% of the world sharks should ring alarm bells and, and really make people stand up. Without sharks, that ecosystem falls apart. And at the bottom of it is phytoplankton, which gives us every second breath of air we breathe. The trajectory is, it's terrifying. But the beautiful thing about the ocean is if you just give it some time and some help, it rebounds very quickly. And that's what we've got to allow to happen now. It's more than just sharks. It's the whole ecosystem, because at the end of the day, that out there is what made me who I am. The person behind the camera is my wife, Amber. What's truly exciting now is we moved into that next chapter, which is having had a beautiful little two-year-old girl called Sailor. What's been awesome living here for the last 30 years is the natural evolution from literally a kayak to get to the shoreline, then a dinghy to get to the point, then a small boat to get to the inner islands, and now with a, a real boat and a big Yamaha, you know, getting to the offshore islands and beyond. My exploration of this area is just growing, but it's only been enabled through those vessels to do it. It's important because you can't understand the ocean if you're just here. You know, you've got to get out there too. I'm Dr. Riley Elliott, and I'm united by Yamaha.